Hey guys, so this is a tactics video. So what we're looking at here is kind of what's left of a setup of a uh, previous game we played a few weeks, a couple months back. And so I am the red and gold mechs and we were defending a building down here in the bomb corner. There's a couple scattered buildings around. Uh, something blocked, there's a big building right across here, kind of like a dam or something. And so they were attacking us. They outnumbered us and we were taking heavy, heavy damage. This Orion over here was getting pretty beat up, and this uh, Lament was getting attacked by a couple small mechs. There were two or three more small mechs on both sides running around over here. And so, basically, I was like, wow, those three assault mechs are really going to break my line if they get close enough. So, what do I have out there? A 95-ton assault mech, a Peacekeeper. Now, that mech can jump three hexes. It's got the 353 movement. So, basically, what this, what this tactic is about is trying to break the line and slow down some of the forces. Because if you suddenly find a, an assault mech in your back lines, even if you have assault mechs back there, it's something to worry about. Because one good shot in your rear torso, uh, you're going to be taking possible criticals. So basically what I did is I jumped this mech over this mountain range, landed him right there. So now he's in the perfect spot to start opening up on the Banshee and the Atlas. Now it also caused the Victor to peel off. So the Victor moved over that way, and so now, one of the three assault mechs is trying to deal with that thing. And since he had to jump, now it's hard for that, that victor to hit, as well as um, get hit in return. But the victor's not the prime target. Victor's the 80 tonner, I'm either going after the 100 or the 95 tonner. And so, basically what I did now in that scenario is I slowed these mechs down. Because next, in the next turn, the Banshee wound up coming over here, Atlas moving forward, and the Peacekeeper jumped out here. After that, the Victor kept chasing him, and wound up jumping somewhere over there, and basically, the Atlas and the Banshee now have this Peacekeeper behind them. All this fighting is going on over here, and so these two now have to deal with this. So now one mech is taking on three mechs, distracting them all. So whatever's going on over here, all these mechs can now concentrate this way. So if the bulk of my force can then destroy one or two mechs over here just by good dice rolls or just being able to get behind them, get the right hits in, then if these guys are able to deal significant damage over here, put some in a force withdrawal or destroy them outright, then they can advance up here. Because Peacekeeper being a 95 ton assault mech, he's going to last a while. Plenty of armor. So basically what happened here is even though he has only three jump jets, jumping over that mountain range, peeled off one assault mech, and now it's putting him in a position to slow down two more assault mechs. So that way the rest of the force can deal with this over here. And if they continue to push, we still have this mech over here defending this flank. So even though the Orion was a bit damaged, he can still dish out plenty of damage. But basically, an assault mech with jump jets, it's pretty good in the right scenario. The next tactic is going to be basically memorizing your movement points. So one of my favorite brackets is going to be 5-8 or 6-9. So basically if you walk straight out of 5-8, you get a 1 to your attacker modifier and 2 to your target modifier. So that's a pretty good trade-off. The Lament right here, this one has a 5-8 movement. And what's nice about that is if he runs, if he just makes one turn, he still gets the 2 to his attacker uh, modifier and a 3 to his, defender mo or to his target modifier. So say he's trying to trying to haul it, and there's a guy up here. So he's trying to really, really get up there. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's gonna be a two in the back, three in the front. By the way we use our little mini dice that I've explained in previous videos. And so basically representing the attacker modifier and the target modifier. So he's moved up that far, and now he's now he's got that good modifier. So Say the Atlas, Atlas wants to just try to move over here. One, two, three, four, five. It gets like that. In the next turn, I could then advance one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, that kind of puts me in a weird position. Sure, the Atlas could just turn around and park in the woods. But the Lament, knowing that he has a heavy PPC in his arm, can turn or turn torso twist his left and still fire off a heavy PPC. In this situation, the Atlas would only have a one for his target modifier, and he's in short range of the heavy PPC. Whereas I still have the two and the three. So it's, it's a little bit of gamble that the Lament could get hit, but the Atlas is still a very, weak tar uh, very easy target right there. 
Now, next up, so the limit, limit's way up there. If you want to see it turned around and moving this way, you know, you think you have to go, you have to do a little loop over here or something like that. Well, what's nice about that 5-8 is you just move backwards. One, two, three, four, five. It's a one in the back, two in the front. Now, the Atlas is in the weird position in that if you tried to move five, one, two, three, four, five, sure, you can get right there, you can get kick off. But he's still going to only have gotten, he's not even going to have a target modifier. So it's a really easy shot. Yeah, the heavy PPCs have a minimum range, but he's got three ER mediums. And on top of that, the radical heat sink system. So even firing the heavy PPCs, that's still going to be a significantly easy hit. Well, not significantly, but kind of average hit. And that, that would be the second point of having the 5.8. Is move yourself to a point where you can back up. So say you push out too far. you got a few mechs ahead of you. And you don't want to get overrun. So let's see here. Let's try. So we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So you move out to there. All right. Somehow this is the last mech to move. So they're all right there. Sure they can shoot at you. You have the two for your... Uh, Two for your attacker modifier, three for your uh, target modifier. But, say so these guys start moving up the next turn. And then they start really, really pushing on you. So then, oh, you just back up. One, two, three, four, five. The exact same thing. Now you got the light, light woods all right here. So all of them are shooting through light woods to try to get to you. So it gives, it gives your mech a break for a second if you're, if you're going over on heat. And then after that, you can blow right by them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, say during the next turn, these guys had already moved like up to here trying to chase you down. You know, you can just blow right by them. And then you have to torso twist and we got arm weapons, so on and so forth. You know, wherever the dragon would have moved off to if he's chasing them. So, that's, that's really nice having that 5 8. Same with the 6 9. Only with the 6 9, if you're walking and you make that one turn, you still get the one for your attacker modifier, two for your target modifier, and pretty much it goes all the way up to all, all the way up after that. Um, five, uh, five, eight, six, nine, uh, seven, eleven, so on and so forth. So it's really good to have those, and always lining yourself up for the backwards movement. So in this scenario, say all these mechs are in front of them. If I tried to do that, it'd be one, two, three, four. And then that's only a one, that's a one for my attacker and one for my target. Because I can't, I only have five, so I can't go in the light woods. And if I torso twist, I mean, yeah, it gives me a, an access route that way or straight back here the next turn. But here, it's just a one and a one. So definitely keeping an eye and you know, thinking ahead, seeing, well, if I go here and they try to advance behind me, can I back up and still get that nice one, that one for the attacker, two for the target. Another thing that a lot of people do is they don't really think about where they're going to move the next turn. So, in this scenario, we have Victor down here. We have Grand Dragon up there. So, the Victor being a 464, this is the Rotary Auto Cannon 5 1, so he's good for the short range shot. Now, he, wants, he, is, the, he is the perfect lineup to get on this guy. All right, the drag, Grand Dragon's completely paying attention to something else. The player didn't even realize the situation was going to happen. So, being a 464, Victor can run six. So this dragon has a weak target modifier, and so the Victor wants to get up close and try to kick. So let's say you only do this. Remember, you have a six running. One, two, three, four, five. That gets you the two in the back, two in the front, and you can still kick, shoot with the rear yard cannon, everything right there. But the next turn, what are you going to do? Yeah, you have some heavy woods you could jump to over here. Um, yeah, you could, I mean, you could back up four, one, two, three, four, then it's a one, one. So that's not really too good if someone else is sweeping around this way. So what you want to look at is where you're going to move the next turn. Now, as I mentioned before, with the six movement, you can turn once and still get that two uh, target modifier. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six. So this way, you can kick, you can shoot, and the next turn, Say this dragon runs off because you punch through on something really bad and this dragon's trying to get back to the forest or something. Next turn, if you want to keep advancing, you go one, two, three, four, five, six. That gets you the one or the two for your attacker, two for your target. 
rather than if you were here, you would go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you had to do two turns. So you've only moved one, two, three, four hexes, so that's only a one for your target modifier. So definitely keeping an eye on that. Uh, a lot of new, a lot of new players like just looking right at the right at the mech and blasting and kicking away, but then you kind of you kind of not in a good position for your next turn. Um, if you have jump jets, sure you can do it if you want. If you have a nice move lined up, so like from right here, I mean you can jump over here, but then you have your three attacker modifier, and so then that's you know that then then you're not as good of a shot at that point. So definitely, if you, if you don't have to be facing a target, where say you say you lose the initiative and you have to move your guys, your guys first. So let's just let's just say it's like that. Oh, a clear terrain. You lost the initiative, but you have to move this victor. This grand dragon has not moved at all. They have, all the other mechs on the field have been moved. All that's left is that victor and that grand dragon. So now you can't go forward. You couldn't even run six X's. Um, you can't go forward at all. I mean, sure, you could you could jump over or try to move up this way or something like that, but you're going to have a low uh, target modifier, make you an easy shot. So you definitely want to line yourself up for the next move. So if you, uh, I mean, in this position, because of all the woods, you can't really get the kickoff and move, but you don't want to trap yourself to where, oh, I have to move and then get out of there because it cuts off one of your movement points. So basically, basically, you would have, if you're trying to get that, you know, two target modifier at least, you have to waste it here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you can't turn to adjust, make it harder for him to sweep around, anything like that. So definitely keep an eye as to where you might be going next turn. Okay, so in the interest of space, this is kind of condensed, it'll probably be a bigger battlefield otherwise. But this this is to talk about uh, using a standoff and a standoff scenario. So you got the big guys, you got the brawlers going at it. Atlas, Banshee, Victor versus Peacekeeper, Orion, and Lament. And then over here, we, uh, he's a little off screen, but we got an Anubis, a Valiant, and a Commando, and then we got a Fire Moth, Bear Cub, and Cicada. Now this isn't done using Battle Value or anything, it's just uh, miniatures thrown on the board. So basically, you have all these fast ones. Anyone that's played the game knows that Bear Cub and Fire Moth are very fast. Uh, Cicada is normally an 8 12 8. Um, so, very fast max. The Valiant can be a 7 11 or 14 with a mask. The Anubis, uh, I haven't used that one recently, but that one's pretty quick as well. And the Commandos are, tend to be 6 9. There's one pirate one that has a 6 jump. So, it can, it can be pretty agile. So, anyway, in this scenario, these guys have the slower movement, clearly. Um, Bear Cubs sometimes have 10, 15. Fire Moths can boost up to 20, I think, with their mask on some models. And so, these guys are duking it out over here. You got the big battle raging over here. What these guys are looking to do, of course, is sweep in behind, tear through the back of the Peacekeeper, tear through the back of the Lament, tear through the back of the Orion. These guys are all planning to do the same thing with those three mechs. Basically, you have to know when to charge in. So, Keeping your distance and having a standoff is always good. This had just happened in another game. So basically, we had the main force going at it, and me and another player, me and I, I had one more player on my team and the other player on their team, he, he, had, he had the speed, just like these guys do. And so basically, I just had to be that threat. I had to hang out in the back to keep these guys from going in here. So. You don't want to rush in because if you have the slower movement, you're just you're not going to win it. And that's another that's another point is watch your enemy max, you know who's moving, how far, and just think about that while you're waiting for other players to move their max. So you have these max back here. You're just going to wait, just wait. All right, don't don't feel the need to rush in. Just keep duking it out over here. And then if one of these guys want to run in, then you send one after. And just keep these guys shifted up close so that way they can react. You want to definitely um, definitely have those guys in reserve to help out. Now I'm going to talk about the boards a little bit. Now this board in particular, it's a lot of use. It's nice because it has some trees, it has some mountains. But 
memorizing the boards is also good to your advantage. So if you look down here, we have a level two light woods, level two with light woods on there. So if you jump onto there from five X's out uh, or further, you get a pretty good modifier jumping on there. Pretty good target modifier. And right here we have two level threes. So in this specific board setup, anything shooting from this, shooting basically any from this direction, you get that plus one for the partial cover. So that's a really good spot that gets used a whole lot. This one right here is also another good spot. It gets you your back up against a wall. So say say you're you're moving this way, say you're moving across this way with the blue guys, and you want to get your back up against the wall. This is a good spot to do it. You got only you got level ones right here, so anything coming at you is partial cover as well as the trees here, if they're shooting through them. And you kind of have a view out here. So let's see if this light mech. You have a light mech, it's right here, and then one of these guys is swept around, somehow gotten way back there. So you're facing this direction already. You are in a position to respond to that. So it's a, it's a good little little hiding spot. This heavy woods also sees a lot of action. It's just a good go-to place. Uh, you have this light woods kind of in the way, shooting this direction. Um, you can see out this way, uh, but it just it just finds a lot of use for some reason. The other good spot is right here, this heavy woods. So as you can see, you got the level one, and then nothing. I mean, you got the light woods here, but nothing other than that. So basically, what you do is you run in right here, you sit here, anything trying to come out this way, you have good shots on. I mean, if you just sit there in those woods, it's a plus three to the target modifier, it's a plus three target modifier to shoot back. He's got the partial cover, as well as the heavy woods. That is a very popular spot. Now on the forest board over here, this hex is key right there. That hex I have used numerous times to push through to get try to get behind enemy lines, just flank around, anything like that. And so it's it's a good spot to go to and to line yourself up for. So say say you have an eleven movement. Alright, that's a good that's a good good one for the light max. Valiant has that one. So you you run up here, say you're right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I mean, you, you literally cut right through there, and then you can respond and move anywhere over here if someone's just sitting in the woods. Because these heavy woods can be pretty popular. Uh, same with same with this heavy woods. Um, this one, these ones don't get used a whole lot. They just use, use the block line of sight most times. Um, but basically knowing how the flow of the boards works well. So this has been a video on tactics, just some basic tactics and things to think about when you're playing. Uh, just you know, just know your movement, know how, know what your ranges are, know know what the other what the other mechs can move. I mean, because I mean, realistically, you you know, most mech warriors know what most mechs are. So you're so trying to put a little bit of realism into the game. You know, technical readouts you know exist in the fiction. So obviously, these guys have seen these mechs; they know different things about them and especially in training simulators, all that stuff in the fiction. So they'll, they'll know about other mechs and how far they can move. So you want to you know that, and you also want to know how can you get out of there. You know, with the other, when you have the 5-8 uh, movement bracket, right way, just backpedal on out. You get a good target modifier and a good attacker modifier. So these are a few, few ideas for you guys, and if you have any questions, just uh, ask them in the comments below, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.